Okay, uh, well, let's start. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Guillaume Lasmayou. I am a NetBSD developer and uh, together with uh, Pierre uh, from Shelly, uh, we are this is uh, NetBSD. Um, basically, uh, this talk is uh, the motivation about this for this talk is uh, grew out of our frustration with some aspects of the NetBSD project. Uh, but it's not only from the development part, but also uh, everything that's facing the end user. And so I'm also speaking here not only as a developer, but more as uh, well, an end user that is uh, discovering the NetBSD environment and being a different. <coughs> Uh, so, in this presentation, we're going to uh, highlight some of the frustrations or some of the aspects that are uh, frustrating to us. Uh, and then we are we are try to explain where we would like the NPS project to go and how we will try to address uh, those, uh, those frustrations. Uh, so, it's not going to be, uh, we are not covering all the details that we have uh, that you won't find in the proceeding. So all of the details are, are, are in the proceeding. <coughs> so when you look at the NetBSD uh, operating system, at the base operating systems, which are the ISO files that are being delivered by the NetBSD Foundation, uh, you see many ways of the base systems. And basically on January the 17th of this year, uh, it was what I call release day. Basically, uh, the NetBSD Foundation, the NetBSD project released four new releases of uh, the operating systems that are listed here NetBSD 6.1.3, That These are uh, what's called stable releases, basically, uh, which come in addition to NetBSD current, which is where development is going. And well, when you're a new user, a newcomer, that you want, and when you want to try the uh, NetBSD operating system, uh, one question that comes extremely frequently on the uh, mailing list or on the IRC channel is which one should I choose? I mean, all of those releases are stable releases, they are all supported, updated, uh, but well, should I go with 5, should I go with 6, 6.0, 6 6.1, well, what should I do? Uh, I mean, there's a very good reason for all those releases, and we do understand why there are so many releases. Uh, it's just that we are supporting those releases for a very long time. Basically, we are supporting, we as the NetBSD project are supporting two <coughs> releases, so 5 and 6, and then when NetBSD 7 will come out, then NetBSD 5 will be supported. But still, from the end user perspective, it's highly confusing. I mean, do I need to go with 6? Point one, point two. Uh, well, no. It, what we are thinking uh, here with Pierre is that we might be might be a good idea to go with some something more like a rolling release. Uh, well, basically, kinds of snapshots or one release, uh, one release only, basically to direct the new users to. Uh, I mean, can be 6.1, can be 6.2, whatever, but only one release that gets updated. More like uh, the OpenBSD or FreeBSD development, basically. Uh, it's going to be less confusing, I assume. Uh, if we look at the package or application, third party uh, applications, uh, from my perspective, uh, that should be a no-brainer. You choose what you want to install, you install it, you run it. Right? That sounds reasonable. I mean, you choose an application, you decide to go with Firefox, well, there may be different versions of Firefox, but still, you choose the version you want to install, you install it, you run it. One tool, choose to install kind of thing. In NetBSD, uh, basically we have several tools to deal with packages, to install packages. Uh, package A is one of the tool, uh, package N is another one, NIH is another one. I mean, there are more than one way of installing package in NetBSD. 
uh, operating system, which is also something that's highly confusing for users. I see you. I'm not a user. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Is, so, is there a user without commit access? Sorry? Is there an FPSD user without commit there access? Are. Yes, there are. <laughs> knowingly, knowingly running FPS. There are. Uh, <laughs> binary packages, the way they are provided today, uh, are compiled uh, on NPSD 6.0 and NPSD 5.1. Uh, I mean, that works perfectly. I mean, binaries, binaries are uh, compiled for what I mean, a binary that was compiled on 6.0, we are working on 6.1. Uh, same thing for the 5.x uh, 5, uh, releases. However, uh, this is also confusing. I mean, uh, when you see users, when you tell a user that install uh, NetBSD 6.1, uh, on three to install packages that have been compiled uh, on NetBSD 6.0, there's kind of a mismatch there. Uh, well, and then more confusion with the uh, the URL. Uh, well, it's not completely consistent, really. I mean, in one time when you look at the uh, when you look at the first one. The one at the top here for, is for the uh, the releases. So you have the operating system, the version, the platform, and then the binaries. And then when you go to the package source subdirectory, then you have the operating system. Well, it's basically makes up uh, the architecture and then the releases. And there's still no mention of the package source release. So basically, uh, in the NPS environment, in the NPS environment, we are supporting well two major releases and five and the package source release are quarterly release so they are packaged that are compiled and provided to the end user every quarter but in this case it's not even mentioned uh, and well if you go deeper in the file tree then you have a bunch of directories that are finally mentioning the package source release here and there but still, I mean, where are you going from there? I mean, there's 6.0, 2013 Q4, and then there's 6.1.3 without any mention of the package source release. I mean, it's, it's all confusing. These are questions that are coming over and over and over on many lists and on the IRC channels. And we haven't found a proper way of addressing it yet uh, at the NetKit. Um, when you look at upgrading packages, so once you've installed your package, let's say with package head that is in the base system, uh, well, you can go on and upgrade the packages with package head, or you can also decide to uh, use packaging or NIH, uh, as well as a bunch of other tools that are, uh, well, are listed here. Some of them are listed here. I'm sure there are other solutions that exist to a great package. But again, I mean, which one which one should I choose? I mean, we have to settle down on uh, one package, one of one, one of one solution, and one of one solution only. I mean, we have to recommend to come up with a recommended solution, with a recommended tool, stick with it. I mean, there will be other tools for sure that will still be there, that will still be usable, but we have to come up with, uh, with one. And well, when it comes to building, that's, that's always the same thing. Uh, there's more than one way to, uh, to build anything. So the official one now is Keybulk, uh, which is uh, used in production on the NetBSD. Uh, build servers. Uh, however, uh, the old bulk build framework, uh, which is officially deprecated in favor of people, is still used uh, in some places. I mean, I'm still using the old framework just because I find it. I mean, I have it configured. It's there. It's working. So I see no, no way of changing this. And there are some other uh, tools such as this PB, which is in package source as well. For 
supply mirroring packages distributions. Um, the trust that the users are placing in the package comes from uh, the location they use to uh, download and install the package. So basically, the package that are published and uh, uh, compiled and published uh, by the NetBSD Foundation are built on the server forms that is uh, owned and managed by the NetBSD Foundation. And this is where the trust comes from, comes from. Basically, nobody but the NetBSD admins have access to those machines. And uh, this is how we are uh, certifying that the packages that you download from those machines have not been tampered with. But basically, there's no formal way to uh, assure a user that those packages have not been tampered with. If for any reason somebody is able to break into this machine and to change a package, basically, we won't be able to, to, to testify on it. Uh, yeah, uh, true. And also, all the packages are served over HTTP. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's clear. Uh, and well, basically, in all, there's no signature mechanism at all in the packages as they are today. I mean, all the bits and pieces, and I was going to explain it, uh, all the bits and pieces are there, it's just not used. Which, which is. Uh, so, no signatures, uh, so basically no way to certify that the packages have not been tampered with. Uh, and the trust uh, in the packages uh, is, comes from the fact that they are built and served from uh, main PSD forward systems. Uh, another thing is that, well, it's difficult to integrate third package, third party uh, repository. I mean, we, many people, many developers are combining package with some different sets of options, for instance, than the ones that are compiled and published by the NetBSD Foundation. Uh, we could think of a way to provide those package to uh, end users to provide more flexibility, maybe. Uh, well, this is not something that we can do today. Uh, however, uh, well, things are moving slowly in the right direction. Uh, back in 2012, I think uh, Jeff Rizzo, uh modified uh, Sysinst, so the system installer, uh, to provide the capability to install and configure packaging, which is basically a package management tool, uh, similar to <coughs> Package in, uh, in FreeBSD or package, package add uh, in, uh, in the OpenBSD world. Uh, packaging does installation, upgrade, removal uh, of, uh, of packages, uh, as well as dependency management. Uh, so the system, the NetBSD system installer has been changed uh, to uh, provide the installation and the configuration of packaging directly from the installer, which means that once you have your system installed, Packaging is there and configured. You just have to issue packaging, install, and the package, the package you want to install. Uh, well, still would dramatically need some binary package. I mean, having a package manager installed in the base system is great, but however, well, we we'll still need package to install, and we we'll, we'll need uh, recent versions and probably the most critical part from my, from my perspective is uh, seamless upgrades. I mean, we have to have one option only, let's say packaging for instance, to install and upgrade the packages. But to be able to do the upgrades, uh, we'll have to have binaries uh, well, that are upgradable properly and, and, and quality packages. Thank you.
virus, so it's fine. There's one here that Guillaume mentioned, and I'm also an NPSD guy. Although, as Guillaume mentioned, I really wanted to take a step back from being a developer and knowing how everything works inside the system, and instead trying to have a more objective view about what BenPC does as a project. And one of these aspects is um, putting myself in the shoes of a vendor. And uh, vendors, as you might expect, need decentralized development. They need to be able, when uh, working up with an open source project, to grasp the code of the project and have the freedom to, to modify it, host it themselves, have their own branches, and whatnot. Well, with NetBSD, unfortunately, we are using CVS, which is a great tool in itself, and I, I really like it myself, but it's centralized. And it's really difficult and error prone to use it in a decentralized way. So nowadays, uh, as you can observe a lot in the Linux community with Android development, for instance, the industry has chosen Git, and Git is the one tool that most people nowadays learn, use all the time, and uh, you can only uh, look at uh, GitHub to figure out that there are millions of repositories over there using Git, and that people actually use that. So the good news is, in NetBSD, York has done an awesome job at converting the CVS uh, history to Git. He's maintaining it, uh, there is, uh, he's pushing his um, generations to, to GitHub on the mirror over there. And several developers from NetBSD itself are using this tree regularly. Uh, so it, it means that there is really like a need even among ourselves to use Git um, or at least something decentralized. So right now this is not the case in, in uh, mainstream NetBSD, but it would be, I think, a really good move, a step forward to consider doing that. Likewise, uh, speaking about packages again, like you mentioned, there are a number of limitations uh, with the system, and there is, in particular, a big inconsistency. In inconsistency sorry. We release, as a BSD project, a stable version of the system when it's ready. Whenever there is a major security issue or some new features, whatever, we release a bunch of new uh, versions. But on another hand, the package source release management process is completely separated. You just get snapshots every three months. And they are supported for three months over each time. And to me, it's really confusing and inconsistent. Being, uh, putting myself in the shoes of a vendor, or even as a user with multiple machines and so on, different architectures, I find it impossible to follow uh, development this way. I think it would be really beneficial for the project to have a long-term support strategy, at least for one branch, and to have it supported for one or two years, maybe, if necessary. If you, this would allow easier um, product management and development for, for vendors, and also it would allow users, administrators and so on, to maintain their machines uh, much more in, in a much more relaxed way and to plan their updates. Because if you, basically nowadays, if you don't follow the release cycle of packet source using a new uh, snapshot every three months, you don't get security updates anymore. And to me, that's simply not acceptable. So, yeah, OpenBSD, for instance, uh, uses binary packages, and they even recommend it as the most secure way to deal with things, simply because then you can trace issues. And you stop me if I'm mistaken, but basically you have one binary environment for the base system, one binary environment for the packages, and if there is an issue, you know what to edit, you know what to look at. You don't care which compiler the user used, or which cosmic ray the compiler was hit with during compilation or whatever. So, it's not again for users, and it's actually more secure. But for this to really be uh, useful and secure, we need to sign the packages. And this need was understood already 12 years ago by package source developers, because we had support entry for uh, binary signatures in package source for 12 years. But I believe nobody has ever been using it. Because when I checked that a year ago, it was broken. It absolutely didn't work. And on top of that, since it was one of the first systems to ever implement that, the, the design of the uh, signing process is not the most elegant you could imagine. However, uh, this is not fixed, um, and uh, I've been using this for a good while with packaging now, and it provides a stable environment to, um, to push uh, security updates to users, to push new package updates uh, with packaging, for instance. It, it just works. So I, 
I would really would like I really would like to see this in production uh, in the next NetBSD release as soon as possible. Of course, it's not so simple. Reality bites a bit. We have uh, in package shows something called options, which defines um, specifically you can choose uh, to, to leave out some features when you compile packages, which uh, works great if you compile your packages every time, but not if you distribute them, because then uh, different users have different needs, they want different options to be enabled or not, and you have only one version of binaries which are generated. You have to make a compromise here, a decision, and not everybody agrees. So this is a big challenge right now, I don't know how to solve that myself. Uh, so if if you have any idea, we'd be welcome to gather them and propose them uh, to, the, to the project, forward them. Um, and after that, uh, of course, binary packages are not only useful for desktop or server farms. They are also useful for embedded development, when you want, for instance, to generate images, to them, or even to update your modern devices or whatnot. And um, this is one of the different kind of uh, use cases that have special requirements. And in some cases, the disk space may be scarce, for instance. And right now, this doesn't really play well with package source because we generate one big package for each source package, including the development libraries, the header files, documentation, and so on. And so you can really uh, have uh, heavy packages to install um, really fast, like big in size, for instance. And this can be a problem. So uh, we probably need a mechanism to be able to generate different binaries, different sets of binaries for uh, which will be including the development libraries or not, <coughs> and so on. So this is also something we should work on, in my opinion. Um, now about security, more generally wise uh, in the system. Uh, in NetBSD again, uh, like I said, we've had a cool security feature implemented a long time ago, but just not enabled and not in use. And the system has lots of such features which are great to have but are not really ever tested because not enabled by default. And then, for instance, uh, SSP is not enabled on every architecture. Why? I don't know why, but it's not. And in, yeah, I, just yesterday I had to patch some uh, bins for ARM, for EVD ARM, <coughs> so that a couple uh, kernels would finally uh, compile. Uh, ASLR is also not enabled by default. So it sort of works, but if you launch Firefox or OpenOffice, uh, it crashes. So, yeah, I couldn't figure out why yet, but it's kind of sad because these are like the two applications that I need. I can tell you why for Firefox. <laughs> what, sorry? I can tell you why for Firefox. Awesome. So, can we get that off offline? On or six, we are we talking 64 bit? Uh, I think it's also on 32 bit, I'm not sure. Okay, on 64-bit, the reason is that the JavaScript just-in-time compiler only deals with 32-bit pointers. So what they do is, on startup, they MF a 2 gigabyte region and have the entire JavaScript just-in-time compiler just work inside that and have their own malloc inside that to make sure that nothing is ever further apart than expressible in 32 bits. Very great. And that's the reason. So basically, Annie is saying that the reason why ASLR doesn't work on 64-bit with Firefox is because of the just-in-time compiler for JavaScript. However, I tried to build Firefox with just-in-time disabled, and it still crashed. So, I okay. so there's enough. apparently more, but that, more than one that's issue. one thing you run into. Yeah. Um, another thing which would be cool is RedRow, which I'm not very familiar with, but we don't have it by default right now. And it looks like it would also be easy to have by default. Um, I use my executable slash TMP on all of my machines and it just works. So it would also be cool to have this maybe generalized in systems or whatever. Uh, spell system encryption would also be interesting to have. Uh, it would also require some work in systems, I guess. And I probably sh uh, should be the one doing that. But yeah. Anyway, uh, such features, in my opinion, are in the speed standard right now. If you look at most, even consumer grade operating systems, they have all of this by default even Apple, which was kind of late doing that, but now they're more like in the right direction. And uh, now we, we are the ones looking behind, unfortunately. <coughs> this is exactly why I had to uh, create my, I mean, start a new project. It's called HTSD, so it's a new member of the BSD family. I, it, it all happened middle of 2013, middle of last year. 
And basically, I just want it to be free to experiment. And um, I, I, I wanted to propose and work on all of these issues without needing to go through consensus first. And uh, figure that no, it would not be possible because. So I wanted to really bite the ground and see if it would work or not. So it's all about testing internet approaches development. It's collaborative, it's not just about me. We have uh, new people uh, who actually join the project. And so this is really about lowering the entrance barrier. Um, we have the, the, the first obvious thing, like Leo mentioned, is that we want to make things less confusing. So just one line of packages, binaries, and um, sort of grasp all of these IDs and have one supported way instead of leaving too much choice. So, yeah, it's too much work to, to fork and the intention is not to fork. So really, the goal is to stick to these use code base, which we all like in the first place anyway. Um, as Gil mentioned, we are trying to implement a reading on these because it simply makes uh, upgrades uh, easy, and actually they have to because this is how everything works. Um, it, as I mentioned, uh, it's probably good to have one recommend way for common tasks. You can always leave the choice, but it's, I, I believe it's always better to have one recommended way for doing anything. Then you can just have the user do that, and then after a while, if they learn that maybe they prefer something else, they can just do it. But at least they have something in direction. Even for developers, it can be useful to support a uh, default environment to be sure that everybody is on the same page and that um, they can work with the same tools and that if they break, something is wrong. So I believe this is necessary. It doesn't mean I want to ban Eclipse, but um, yeah, it's, up, it's up to you. And even <coughs> more than that, uh, working in companies regularly, being a freelancer, I experience that sometimes scheduling, voice over IP, calling people can be really useful and can gain a lot of time, so it's something I want to provide uh, with the project. We store some asterisk a server somewhere and some calda and then maybe plan uh, plan things a, a, a bit this way. The security is provided, right? It's the same thing. Anyway, so after that, of course in, in, in the uh, Long term, the goal is to make things more user friendly. So this is really our concern now. This could even uh, include a graphical installer. This is something I really uh, uh, would like to have. I'm working on such things already for quite a few years as part of the DeepRoutes project, which also, by the way, uh, already provides a desktop environment. You may have uh, seen it from some of my previous talks. And in a different context, it would also be useful to provide ready to flash images for embedded targets. And this is already the case, for instance, for the Raspberry Pi. I think it's Matt who's providing uh, images ready to boot. However, they are not official. And I think it's a shame that this hard work is not more publicized. And even myself, having a Raspberry Pi, I, it took me a while to figure out that yes, we had images. Because they were on some missed directory somewhere. I really had to look for them. And in my opinion, they should be treated like releases. Of course, in NBSD6, in the latest stable releases, it, the support is not really great yet. It's, it's been released for a couple of years now. But uh, we should maybe think about a way to be more dynamic there and <coughs> propose in SBSD or, or also propose uh, such images directly. Anyway, something I can already uh, mention uh, as being achieved through the HPD project is, as I mentioned, the binary package management. Uh, and we are providing signed packages over there. We are building them unprivileged, so we, we are building the same packages that would be built if you would be using SU or sudo, except we don't use SU or sudo, we use payload, and it just works. Of course, you can also bootstrap package source in unprivileged mode, but then it will change the way it generates packages, because it expects you to always run them as your own user. But it's possible to bootstrap package source also this way, and it works. These slides are the proof of it. They are running this. Um, I spoke about the LTS support, and as it happens, uh, in HPSD we already have this policy in place, more because we must than because we uh, want to. Actually, it's because uh, package source is used not only by NBSD users, but also Linux, FreeBSD, and other platforms. And these users want the latest <coughs> Evoke uh, versions, module ISO. And right now, in NBSD, 
you don't have KMS, which is required for the newer XOs. So somebody put XOs in modular in, in the package source packages. And if you want to use modular XOs from the packages on NTSD, well, you're toast. And so the latest version that was working is from 2013, if you want. That's the one we therefore have in HPSD. One more thing we have, and which is really promising uh, super fast right now, is support for a new architecture. And there is this CPU called LM32, which is actually virtual. It's something you typically flash on a data board, and then it runs this architecture. Uh, we have a port for, uh, to, to, to NetBSD for this, for this CPU. And as of two days ago, it boots, uh, the, the kernel boots all the way and tries to execute in it. So it took a few months for Jan to achieve this, but uh, yeah, it's, it's in progress, advancing rapidly, and it's also allowed by the fact we're using it because we have three developers working on it at the same time, and with CDS it would be really, really difficult to achieve that. Um, I'm also working right now on a script to generate virtual machine images, or uh, ready, to to, ready to flash images for the device and so on. It's called Edge, uh, and you can find it in one of our repositories. If you're interested, just, just ask me in the other session, for instance. And another achievement, uh, which I really, really appreciate, is that um, this project already attracted a new generation of developers. So, uh, of course, we, have, uh, we are now three people from the NetBSD project interested by NetBSD and working on it. But we also attracted people outside of the NetBSD project who didn't want to use CVS or did not want to be involved with an American corporation, an uh, organization, foundation or who just wanted to, you know, like, first learn and see whatever was going on, but still publish whatever they are doing. So right now in HPSD, it's possible for each and every one to just publish the work, like it would be on GitHub. And uh, this uh, has us now being six or seven developers, all sharing our work on one repository this way. And we don't care if we are official developers or not. So we are now Guillaume, myself, and uh, Al Kujawa from, from Poland, uh, active on the project from the NetBSD uh, project, project originally. And we also have uh, Dr. Skrim, Fodan, Kuda, and Yuri, uh, who join the project and publish uh, their, their branches, uh, respectively, on, on our Git repo. And we hang out on IRC, so you're also free to uh, jump by and uh, say hi and work with us if you like. Of course, uh, there are many, many things we, we want to achieve that we couldn't exactly complete yet. Um, we have a challenge right now to bring improvements back to NetBSD because we are using uh, the, the, the mirror from York. Uh, he is mirroring the CBS history and, and commits on his Git repo, but unfortunately, due to the way that NetBSD uses CBS, sometimes this breaks. The generation of the Git tree is, is good, but the commit uh, hashes changed. It breaks the chain of commits, and we can no longer um, apply our changes back on the NetBSD one. So this is problematic right now, and uh, it means right now we're not able to track the NetBSD head uh, that we wanted to. So we're working on this. Um, I mentioned the package uh, packages from 2013 <coughs> that we're using now. Well, they are not uh, maintained anymore by package source. So we have no security updates for them. So we have to do it ourselves. So right now it's a challenge too. We have to uh, backport all of these uh, security updates. And of course, we have a, a backlog right now. So it's not great, but we are working on it. Any help is, is welcome on, on this as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, a port to a new CPU. And uh, the new challenge is to um, get the user to work. So first get the first setting we linked primary to execute and so on. And then if the system would differ too much with NetBSD, we will have to, to change the way the system identifies, change the output of your name. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be problematic. This is going to be a, a lot of headaches on, on the road on the road doing that. But anyway, um, I'm really glad uh, to have achieved already what we what we did, together with the others. And uh, I would like to thank you for your attention now. Uh, I think we have some time for questions. So I would be, you're all welcome to ask. And if you do, and you're not uh, M size anymore, I have a bunch of t-shirts for you guys. So you can also proudly wear the HPSD <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs>
So do we have any questions? Everybody's afraid of getting the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get it, I'll show it at you. Okay. What's your size? <clears throat> you like orange? Yes. <laughs> you want to you want to load even more shirts on me? Yeah. It looks like your phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm M. Damn, that was a question. I have a question about a Git repository. Yeah. So you are using Git for package source only, or we are using Git for package source and for source. Uh, I'm using your, I don't know, but uh, your repository for my uh, local <coughs> deployment. But it's, is it an official one or? So when you say your repository, which one do you mean? Uh, maybe J J U. <coughs> Uh, the your repository that you presented in this presentation. The, the one on GitHub? Yes, yes. Then, then that's from uh, Jorg. It's from Jorg, then Berger, who is also an official developer of the project. I know, it's, it's, it's my local repository, but uh, I'm, I, I'm asking you, yeah. that repository is official one or not? Well, uh, it, it depends which one you speak about. Uh, oh, sorry. There's, there's, there's no official Git repository for NPC anywhere. I mean, the official source code repository is the CVS repository. Yes, yes, right. Uh, I believe there is a read-only version of uh, the source uh, maintaining Git by one of the admins. But again, it's read-only and it's not the official repository. I mean, the only official repository for code is it's CVS. CVS. And is it a any plan to move to Git? <laughs> well, it's it's a never-ending question. I mean, if you go and look at the uh, the mailing list that uh, yes, are discussing the, the choice for, for source code management system, it's never-ending discussions. Uh, we chose uh, here Git because we wanted to see can can it work with Git instead of CVS? Can we work with it? Can we do something? Can we can we follow uh, and do development based on an NPSD code base using Git rather than CVS. Yeah. Uh, there are some issues with the conversion. Uh, there are still some issues with the conversion. As uh, Pierre mentioned, uh, uh, each time there's a, a break in the chain of commits, then you have to manually cache up and so on. So <coughs> there are discussions uh, yes. that are never-ending discussions. And as of today, I am not aware of any plans to change the, the source code management. Oh. Why is it never-ending discussion? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's right. <laughs> because you have to throw the guys that will be for Git, the ones that will be pro Mercurial, the ones that will be against Git, the ones that will be against Mercurial, the ones that will be pro Fossil. Takes the decision. It's going to be, well, there, are, there has some uh, issues that, has to be, that have to be addressed first. The first one is that there's something like 20 years of history in the CVS repo. And uh, the, the, mandatory, the one mandatory thing is that the conversion has to preserve the whole directory, all branches, and everything. So this, this, this is, basically, this is the one mandatory thing. That, Whatever you convert to fossil, git, mercury, whatever, it has to preserve all the history, all the branches, and everything. And it's not an easy task, basically. Uh, there have been some uh, work done by York uh, to convert to fossil, to convert to git, but none of them are perfect, basically. There are all some glitches here and there. Uh, so once this is addressed, then there might be one way to move to something else. Uh, but then uh, the decision is going to be taken by core, I believe, the core uh, members of the Nebulian Foundation. Yep. Uwe at OpenBSD has the soft poker. Uh -huh. He has a converter that preserves everything. Okay. So UWD. Okay. So, but the, the matter is not only that, it's that the NPSD repo, the CVS uh, repo, is kind of broken because it's been manually edited repeatedly during history. And so <laughs> lots of existing conversion tools fail uh, at converting it. He, he had the same problem, which yeah. is why he wrote his okay. own or extended something. I'm not 
into the details, but he has it working. Okay, and this morning also, um, during the IIJ talk, uh, Saito mentioned that IIJ has an ongoing development tool called CDS to Git to also achieve this task. And they are working at human on it. And apparently it's going to be available next week. Uh, but or, the next but, week. but that doesn't uh, uh, convert the whole tree because All right. you can't do that. As, I, as you mentioned, that it was broken in TBS history. So okay. we only port the trees with what which uh, branches which we need only mm. for a few branches yeah. target. So no whole history. Okay, so I need to, to, to talk to Google then. Might search for some work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then again, even though even if the conversion is fixed, then there is to be a chip. I mean, there's the workflow that needs to be adjusted as well. I mean, there are a bunch of tools that are connected to CVS. Uh, the way this, the developer works today is connected uh, to CVS. So moving to something else, whatever that is, means that all the processes have to be rethink. So, uh, well, it's not going to happen tomorrow anymore. Anyway. Thank you. We don't want the t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll see you around. <laughs>